Hi, it's Lou Collins, and today I'd like to show you how to get started with Cricut Design Space. Now, Cricut Design Space is the program that you're going to need to connect to your Cricut cutting machine. So we've got the Cricut Joy here, and this is part of a beginner series for everyone starting to use the Cricut Joy. So Design Space has lots and lots of features, and we're just going to run through the basics for you so that you can get to know the program. Now, I'm going to be doing this on a computer, but there is also a video so that you can learn how to do this if you decide to use your mobile phone instead. So once you've downloaded Cricut Design Space onto your computer and you open it up, this is the sort of thing that you're going to find. So you're going to be able to scroll down and see lots and lots of different projects that you can use that are already made for you. Now you'll notice that there's this little A green banner besides some of the projects and shapes and things that you can be downloading and using. Now this is because Cricut does have a membership scheme called Cricut Access. Now I'm going to be doing this tutorial based on the assumption that you are not a Cricut Access member and that you'll need to be using the free elements with Cricut Design Space. Now the first thing you're going to want to do when you have Cricut Design Space is open up a new new project in the top right hand corner. This is going to bring up a workspace for you. Now this workspace is always going to be much larger than the grid that you're going to be putting into your machine. If you go up into the top left hand corner you can scroll down and see your settings and if you go to canvas you can change this to imperial or metric if you wish. So this is one good thing to get set up right at the beginning so that you know you're always working in inches or centimetres, whichever is your preference. So the next thing you're going to want to do is bring in some images or some text. Now we have a lot on the side here. And these are all the sort of elements that you can bring in to uh, your design space here. So we have things like, first of all, let's run through these quickly. We have templates. Now these are nice, easy templates, clear for you to see, you can scroll through them and you can bring any one of these into your design space simply by clicking once onto it and you'll see that has brought the template in for you. So this is great if you want to design an image or a logo to fit onto an apron for example here. So these are just templates. These are not going to be uh, cutting out for you. They're to help you really size things. Now within Cricut Design Space, there are pre-made projects for you and you'll find this under the projects tabs. So again, when you look at these, you'll see that you have some projects that are free to use and some projects which have the A, the access sign or symbol on them. So you'll want to really search for free to start with unless you're an Access member. If you go to the All Categories drop down in the top right hand corner, you can scroll down to Free. This will just make it easier for you to scroll through. We also have Shapes and this is fairly self-explanatory. This has lots and lots of shapes. Now at first you've got your free shapes and then you've got those that were included with the uh, Cricut Access membership. So we're going to look at the free ones. So let's just take a heart, for example. So you just click on your heart and that will come into your workspace straight away. Now you can use the square on the corners to resize it. Now you notice as I drag this, the heart is getting larger and smaller, but it's not changing shape. If we look at the top bar here, we've got the size and this is relevant for any item you're bringing into your workspace. So we can adjust the width and the height of this. Now, whilst the little um, padlock at the top is unlocked, um, this means that you can adjust the width and the height. So if I adjust just the width here, just by clicking the arrows, the entire shape is being stretched. So if I find a shape that I like, let's just bring that a little less wide, so a nice wide heart. If I like that shape, but I want to make it larger, but keeping those proportions, I can click the little padlock to lock those proportions there. And then if I want to adjust, say for example, the height or the width any, any further, I can do that and those proportions are now kept. 
Now we'll come back to some more of the details across the top in just a moment when we've covered everything that's in this left hand bar. Now, not only do we have shapes, we also have images. Now again, these are going to be in sections and I would suggest you pop on free in the categories first of all. Now you'll see that you've got the word free underneath each of these. So we can bring in any one of these. Let's just click on Happy Mother's Day and you can see down the bottom right hand corner, you can add to canvas. You also do have your shapes in here too. Now the idea with the images is that they're more detailed. Some of them may be layered as well, different colored um, ones. So definitely have a browse through here. There's an awful lot to choose from. You may even want to do things like um, set the language. So for example, you can see here we have some French images here. You can come to language on the left hand side and you can scroll down and click English or whatever your language may be. And there you'll only have words um, which have English wording in them. So once we've chosen our design, we simply add to canvas and this will just drop in at its own size. So again, you will need to uh, resize that to fit your project in the way I've just shown you with shapes. Now you can add multiple images and multiple shapes to your canvas. Then we have text. If we click on the text button, we straight away get this text box up. As with uh, most computer programs, if you hover over the text, you do get the, uh, the cursor that allows you to alter the text. So simply click in the text box, you can delete the letters that are already there and then put your own letters instead. Now the beauty of this is that it will already have installed some Cricut fonts. It will have installed some fonts that are on your computer also and you can add your own in if you download them from elsewhere on the internet. If you uh, hold down and highlight that word, you can then use everything at the top to start changing your fonts. So the first one we have is the actual font um, style. So we can change these two. Again, um, it may be helpful for you to go through to free simply by clicking the filters icon in the top right hand corner of this box, tick free. And then you know that you're not expected to sign in to um, Cricut Access to use these. Phrases is uh, relatively new to a Cricut Design Space and it's simply phrases rather than individual words. As a beginner, another really useful feature of a Cricut Design Space is that you can upload your own designs. So when you upload, you can simply choose to upload your designs. Now these are some that I have downloaded already from Craftstash. They have lots of SVGs and uh, PNG files for you to use. So just very basically, an SVG is a cutting file, a PNG is something that you would usually draw. Um, so you can use these within your Cricut Joy designs. So for example, this butterfly, I have recently created a video using this butterfly in a project, so you can see that. But these are recent ones. You can also upload your own, upload your own from your computer if you wish. If I add this to canvas, you can see again, it will drop in at its own size, usually quite large. So you'll need to just come down to the percentage size here and zoom out until you've got the entire image, scale that right down, and then you can go back to your larger size if you wish. So they're the basic features of the left hand bar. Now let's look more at the top bar. So if I select this image by clicking on it, you'll see we've got some elements highlighted at the top now. So you have your basic undo and redo buttons, which are really helpful. You have your basic cut if you wanted to cut this image out. But if you drop down that, you also have the draw and the foil element. You also have guide here as well. Guide is not going to do anything in your machine. It's simply a guide for you on your uh, mat if you want to add other elements and use this shape as a guide, for example. So um, I rarely use this one, but it can be helpful just to know what it does. So if I wanted to actually draw this um, butterfly onto a project as we did with 
the recent video which you'll find on the Craftstash YouTube channel, um, I would click pen to ensure that this is a drawn image and you'll see now all of the draw lines. I'm just going to add this text back in here because this is a really helpful feature. I'm going to highlight the text here. We'll leave, leave it as the word text. And I'm just going to change the font here very quickly. So let's go, we've still got this set to free fonts. Um, so let's just change it to something nice and simple. There we go. Let's make that a little bit bigger by dragging it out. Now, something I'd like to do is not only would I like to cut out the word text, let's just change this to say hello. And this is something, again, I have done in a recent project video that you'll find on the Craft Stash YouTube channel. I've got the word hello here. So what I'd like to do is uh, cut that out as it is, but I'd also like to cut out a shadow, a mat for this to sit onto. And this is something that particularly card makers and scrapbookers will do very often with their sentiments or their titles. So I'm just going to have my, um, have my words selected there. And we're going to need to duplicate this. Now we can do this very easily up in the top right hand corner hit duplicate and we now have the identical image again. So just dragging that down below. Now if I select this second one and I come to offset here, drop down here. Now you can see a blue line has been applied around the word. Okay, this has offset it. Now we can offset it much, much larger or we can offset it so that it offsets inside the word if you wanted to for your project. I like to make this a little bit larger and you need it large enough so that the elements sit together if you want this shadow to be a nice way of spacing out your letters on your project. You can also play around with the shape of the corners and such. I prefer curved and you want to make sure weld offsets is together so that each of your shadows around each letter is welded together and they do need to be touching for this to happen. So for example, if I had this a bit too small here, this would cut out as five individual shapes. So I just enlarge it until they're all touching and that will naturally weld them together. If I apply that, you'll see my new shape. Let's just remove this now, we can take that away. We've got our new shape that we can cut out and then we'll cut out our words and these will sit on top. Now, as you see here, I've just dragged this down and it's actually sitting underneath the shadow. So I can't really see what this is going to look like when I cut out both sections. So I'm going to go to arrange in the top here and I can bring the highlighted section right to the front. And now I can make sure that that's going to sit nicely within there. Yep, perfect. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with how it looks. So I can cut out both from different colored cardstocks and I can go ahead and create a layered sentiment. Now there's lots of other options for you here. Things like changing the style of your words, things like letter spacing as well. Um, there's lots you can play around with. You can't do anything wrong. I would suggest just have a play, pressing things and seeing what they do. So as a beginner, um, particularly if you're a paper crafter, I think over on the left hand side, the only section that you really need to think about is your group and ungroup um, and your duplicate and your bin as well or your delete. These are fairly self-explanatory. You've seen me use duplicate um, with the ungroup. So we've got the letters, the words selected there already. If we click ungroup, that's going to section each of the letters into their own little piece. So I can now move and if I wanted to, I could kind of stagger these so that the, the word isn't as straight. Maybe if you wanted to move the letters around. That's your choice. If you do that, of course, you do need to redo your uh, border there. So you've got everything ungrouped there. If you drag, holding down your mouse and you drag over all these letters again, you can then regroup them if you wish. And you'll see them over here in a group and there's the individuals and then there's the offset. This is another way of selecting the elements you want by finding them in this list and selecting them, highlighting them. You'll see that you're selecting over in the workspace. So then of course, the last thing, if I wanted to remove the offset, for example, I can simply go on remove or delete using the bin. 
Now once you've got your elements that you want to cut out or draw, simply go to make it in the top right hand corner. Now this has brought everything together for me on my mat and it's spaced it out in a way that uses as little cardstock or vinyl as possible. If we come back to our design space here and highlight our word again, if we come back to the bottom right hand corner, you'll see the word attach here. If we attach these as they are and then go to make it, you just need to select whether you're cutting onto a smart material or onto a mat. You can also choose your mat size. Now, because of the size of my project on my design space, I'd need to use my extendable mat. So confirm that. And you'll notice that they are all as they are on my screen and not all selected into various parts like a jigsaw. If you are going to be cutting onto heat transfer vinyl, you are going to be needing to mirror your image so that you cut the, uh, the reverse of the material and not the front. And this way, once you transfer that onto your project, it will be the correct way round. Once you're happy with the position of your project and the size, and you can now move it around on your mat as well, I'd say keep it to a corner so that you use as little material as possible. You can hit continue. And this is where you need to ensure that your machine is plugged in and ready to use. Now we did cover in the uh, beginners setting up video how to connect your Cricut Joy to your Cricut Design Space via Bluetooth. So once your machine's plugged in, your computer should automatically recognize this. Now we get to choose our cardstock and we can browse all materials and you have lots and lots of materials here to work from. The main material that I tend to cut is medium cardstock and if I want to I can highlight this as one of my favourites so that next time I choose a material it comes up in my bookmarks ones here, just easier for you to find. And then click done once you've highlighted the material you're using. Now the reason it asks you about the material is because it needs to know the depth of the blade and how many times it needs to go over the cut lines. So for example if you're going to be using a heavy weight cardstock it will go over the design often three times. If you know from experience that the cardstock you're cutting is a little bit harder to get through or just one pass isn't quite doing it, you can also change the pressure on your machine so that there's a little bit more or a little bit less if needed. This is going to only really come with experience from cutting certain materials. You then need to load your blade into your machine which is usually there and load your mat into your machine. Once that's done, you can click go and start either cutting, drawing or foiling your project. Hopefully that's given some of you the confidence to start using Cricut Design Space. There's lots and lots of other features and we will cover those in future videos for you. But as a beginner's guide, that's given you lots to get on with and start playing with. Now, like I say, you can use Cricut Design Space on a mobile device too. And if you're interested in doing it that way, please do check out the tutorial on the Craft Stash YouTube channel.